What up everybody? Fresh up episode 208 of Raising Canaan. A house is not a home. I'm going to title this video Sloppy Moves or Moving Sloppy. Something like that. Because last week at this time, I came to y'all and I told y'all this is the beginning of the end for the Thomas family. And I laid out Marvin, Lulu, and Rock. How they has, are starting to make big time mistakes that's going to end up costing them in the end and we've done seen it in already one week later the first domino has fallen marvin looks like he gets killed either though the episode ended with him and um his counselor i don't know the girl's name but yeah him and his counselor getting shot or one of them getting shot we really don't know how that's gonna go so I mean it looks like Marvin is dead but I mean we see him get one between the eyes like we did Tony or something like that or we saw Crown get choked out uh, we ain't really see necessarily what happens if you really look close we do see they ducked when when they said hey Marvin they Marvin and the girl ducked so maybe he only got shot maybe he survived but it looks like marvin most likely is dead so and that was all a result of him moving sloppy number one he started off a few episodes ago after he'd been doing so well this season following rock's orders not going out of line controlling his temper learning from the class now we see him starting to move sloppy. It started when he went back and started looking for Tony in wherever they live. He started following. He got cop, he got the cop stopping him and all kinds of stuff. Stop the cop was following him. And he could have, and like I said, he should have just let that go. That girl is out of mind, out of sight. She didn't show up to court. And so really nothing came out of that. He could have really just let it go. She's his move. She had moved on. He had moved on. His family's business is doing better than it had ever done before. They're, ex they're expanding to like three or four buildings now. He should have just left it alone. Let it be water, water off a duck's back. But nah, he went looking for this girl again. And then on top of that, okay, you want to take her out. She snitched on you. Cool, right? Cool, cool, right? But then you go behind Rock's back to do it. So why didn't you go to Rock to tell her to talk, discuss your plan? Why don't you and Rock go make a plan? And as somebody who had been in the game, I'm telling you. My OGs had done save me from being in a situation possibly like this, from making mistakes. Told me just to let it go. It's not worth. It's not worth the trouble getting into nothing with. Marvin didn't consult nobody. He ain't consult Lulu. Either Lulu, his little brother. He didn't consult Rock. He ain't consult nobody about this. He took matters into his own hands. And then this is what. <laughs> This is why he ain't running things to begin with. But he hires Marco Baselli. On top of that, Marco Baselli seemed like he was down for the job. Either though he went around his father, he didn't want Saul knowing anything about it. So both of these dudes moving out of order from their business from from they from they businesses. Uh, Marvin should have consulted with Rock. Marco should have consulted his father. See, this is why Saul was so angry because he said, if Marvin would have came to me, we wouldn't be in this position right now. See, Sal could have handled it, but they wouldn't have been in that position because he ain't going to send the old boy, whoever that guy's name. I still can't remember that guy's name. The guy who went in with Marco. And that's really what ended up costing because Marco hit the girl between the eyes 
and then that guy comes in and just starts just shooting like crazy and that gave the dentist a time to jump on top top of Marco and cost him the whole situation to begin with so he made a terrible mistake but Marvin hiring this kid and then I'm gonna get into this previous episode this episode now we're on to so oh, that was the last episode all moving sloppy up and up until there. I just wanted to lay a little history how he handled this whole situation wrong. Now he's already handled the situation wrong, and you knew the episode starts out unique and Marvin. Unique held it down like a G for the Thomas family again in this episode because I mean he ain't give them up to Saul. He ain't give up Marvin. He told Rock everything was going on but he told from the beginning of the episode he straight up told Marvin you're in a world of trouble Marvin plays it off like he didn't know how dangerous those Italians were he had his warning he goes on throughout the entire episode going about his business he goes and addresses Kenyon and I'll get into that in another video. Finally gets his daughter to call him dad by addressing Kenya. Goes out and it's late at night when he gets shot. And he's trying to get on hook up late at night. She told him, oh, I didn't expect anybody to, you, start, you scare me, it's late. And she was happy to see him, but it was still, she mentioned that it was late at night. You done made a terrible mistake bruh and you possibly your sister gotta go to a meeting <laughs> with Sal Baselli about you and you still out just hanging out doing whatever going to ask your 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 guidance counselor out on a date bruh and you need to be somewhere hiding out man he had the warning. Moved sloppy the whole episode. Shouldn't have been out in public where he could be such an easy target like that. Like he like he wasn't even expecting no backlash. After he already received the warning from Unique. So I don't know if Marvin's dead or not. Man, I love that character. R.I.P. Uncle Marvin Thomas. If he don't survive that shooting. But we honestly don't know if he's going to survive it or not. Alright, as for Lulu. After killing off Crown Camacho. He finds out that his business partner Crown was in some serious debt. And he has to go and join business with Cartier Duns for Reed. And Cartier you does for Reed basically is only a 25% business partner, but that also puts he ain't gonna be it's Cartier Duns Free ain't somebody he's just gonna punk around like he was punking around Crown Camacho, and it also puts him in like the position of Crown Camacho and Cartier for Reed in the position he was in. So he's honestly in a worse position with his business being up under Cartier for Reed because it's not someone he gonna be able to push around. We even saw the clip from the end of the last episode where they're in the studio they're all jamming Zeus is singing and um and Lulu tries to touch something on the on the keyboard or whatever and Cartier tells him nah don't touch that so we already see Cartier trying to control things just from that 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 small clip now we see how sloppy he handled uh crown he just dumped his body in some kind of ri uh, river or lake or something like that. I don't even think he tied a stone to the, his leg or anything like that. He just just threw the body in there and left it left it to be. And now we see Crown Camacho's body being discovered. They find the bulletproof records cards in his pocket. So now they're going to start investigating Crown's death. So if he doesn't already have enough trouble with 
Cartier now is his new business partner. He handled Crown Camacho's death really sloppy. And he gonna have possibly the feds coming to bulletproof records questioning him at least. They're gonna show up questioning him about when the last time he saw his business partner Crown Camacho. So we see Lulu moving sloppy. On top of that, he finally gets Ziza's song played on the radio. But he got to do it by putting a gun in DJ Mo's mouth. So yeah, he handled that. But now he got an enemy probably with DJ Mo. Maybe. I don't know what's going to cause it to come out of that. But kind of enforcing, forcing his way. I, mean, I don't blame him for doing that. It, it might be a little sloppy too, but hey, he did what he had to do. He paid the man to do it. He's getting impatient. I'll give him a pass with the whole gun to the DJ Mo's mouth. <coughs> now we got Rock starting to come down on her now. All her lies have came down and Kanan has finally moved out and he is staying with famous because he now knows that detective howard is truly his dad after seeing the paternity results so rock now has her son not staying at home that's why the title of the show was a house is not a home because their argument took place in the new home that Rock just bought and Kanan said he liked the house they already live in but on top of that I talked about how she is playing Cartier Duns for Re. she's getting all his information he's done learned about how he cleans his money where he does business at she knows his supplier, like not supplier, she knows the person, his, his distributor, now the person who distributes the product for him in, in Baltimore and DC. And now she done listened again and Cartier keeps spilling the beans and he done told her that Antonio was the guy's name? I don't remember the guy's name. One of his people Dunn got caught on a weapons charge and he just gonna leave him in there. So what does Rock do? She goes and now she's having somebody make sure that this man gets out because she is trying to take Cartier's business from Washington and Baltimore. So she's going between him and I don't know if Cartier is going to when he's going to find this out, if he's going to find out. But we did see in the trailer. Now Cartier is in trying to go in business and be an investor into Rock's business. Okay? So uh, maybe she might be talking about the... I think he's talking about the, the drug game. But he might have been talking about the record label. I don't know. I got to go back and see it. But I'm pretty sure he's talking about the drug game. Either way. But is we gotta wonder is Cartier playing rock this this whole time, giving her all of this information? Because if we go back to power, Angela thought she was playing James. She put the monitor on his phone. She tracked him and or the mirror on his phone. She was able to track all his messages, and she got the location of the Lobos meeting. And she ended up getting arrested. She ended up arresting Lobos and Tommy Egan. But James was playing her. Ghost was playing her the entire time. He already knew she was tracking his phone. So he used that to his advantage to set up Lobos. And now I'm wondering if Cartier Dunsfarid is doing making the same kind of move as Ghost made. In the previous, uh, not the previous episode, in power, as he's playing rock, he already knows what rock gonna be doing. So that's a question to ask yourself, because he seems he seems like he's a little too smart, just be giving up all this 
information. But he could just be arrogant also. But it could be a fact that he could be playing her. So keep that keep that in mind. However, one domino dropped out the the, the, the Thomas family empire. I said it last week. That it was the beginning of the end. And now the big brother has taken out. Now we'll only be wait to see who is next. Who is next in line? 